It's part two. It's been a week. We've had the luck flowing through said week, and it all stemmed from last week, because holy frickin' moly, two full sets of tool sight. What am I gonna do? Seriously, look at how far we've gotten. <laughs> I've done nothing. Oh, I've done nothing, and the game has just given me everything. And now I got all these bloody berry bushes right here to take care of. Okay, okay. I need to, like... Calm down and like look at my map and realize where I left things, what everything is doing, to see where these right there. Do I even have like an alchemy engine? Did I build one? The doy doy's there. Okay, everybody, give me a minute here. All right, alchemy engine located after an embarrassing amount of time. I gotta be honest, it was just hidden in this little magma biome. I just could not see it on the map, but we know where it is. The problem is, I don't actually remember what's by it. Like, is Packham holding all of it right now? Or did I actually leave things over there? I don't know. But I'm still trying to, like, collect my thoughts and calm down. So I'm just digging up berry bushes, everybody. A lot of berry bushes. And oh boy, I'm remembering the woes of having to eat stuff that's not crockpot meals, everybody. Oh my gosh. Okay. I have this sneaking suspicion that our luck is not really going to hold out. I don't know. I might be proven wrong. I probably will be. But I guess we'll find out. I'll tell you what though, the game definitely wants us to have a good bloody start on magic. 12 living logs and all of them have come from the totally normal trees. Unbelievable. But we're off folks, and I've been thinking. All this luck means diddly squats unless we can find ourselves a suitable base. However, we've done a lot of shipwreck playthroughs, haven't we? We've done a lot of different type of bases, haven't we? But there has always been something that we've never fully committed to, and that was an ocean-based base. Hmm, I feel like Warbucks would not be comfortable with that, so I think we're gonna do that. Oh, do I even want to do these anymore, everybody? <laughs> I'll pick them up. I'll, oh, of course. Literally tempting me. That's where I was returning. To, are you kidding me, game? I was returning home to the alchemy engine to see what I needed to start said ocean base. Oh, game. What are you doing to me? Oh, okay. A boat set piece. Problem. I don't remember if this one is trapped or not. Time to find out. No? Okay. Well then, I will take a free boat lantern. I will not be taking that sail though, because mine's better. Good stuff, everybody. Did I just, oh no, never mind. Don't look at me, I don't remember what I'm doing. Oh, but I hear some crocodogs, everybody. Is this gonna be our first crocodog wave of this playthrough? I think it might be, so this should be easy. I just dropped, I let Peckham Backham's behind. <laughs> Don't tell him, everybody. I love Peckham. Screw you, Jester. Holy moly, I kind of forgot how long it takes for them to actually warn you of the first bloody hound wave or crocodile wave in that matter. Nope, screw you. Uh, remember, crocodiles, by the way, are like the only mob in this bloody game that can be constantly stun locked, like after one hit. So don't even bother. Dodge once, hit them forever. All right, so I answered my question coming back home, everybody. I was carrying it all with me. I had it all. So no wonder I was kind of feeling overwhelmed. I'm probably about to feel it even more now, right? Actually, that wasn't too great. These will come in handy if we find the uh, volcano eventually, of course. Another red gem. We got a ton of those. Boat cannon. Yeah, occasionally useful. But yeah, compared to what we were getting last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, 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 so. My... Assumption is, we need tar. Yup, tar, but also coral. So my gosh, is this convenient that we have the biggest coral reef ever right to bloody here. But as far as the tar pits, yeah, I don't think we've seen any. Hmm, so I can't really do all that much while simultaneously actually being able to do a lot, because I kind of forgot that you don't actually need tar for a lot of this sea ocean stuff. Trust me, we're going to be building a lot of it today, so you'll see what I mean in a bit. But my gosh, I just thought of something before I left, everyone. The game is literally directing this playthrough right now. This is too convenient. This is too flippin' convenient. Watch this, everybody. Watch this. Here's the thing about mining coral reefs in this game. 
It takes a lot of durability, even off of luxury tools. You can see it. I'm using a luxury pickaxe right now. Even one as basic as the one I just did, I've done two and I'm already down to 90%. Yeah, that's not great. Watch what happens, however, when you use a boat cannon on coral reefs. I missed. <laughs> Watch what happens when we use a boat cannon on coral reefs. Just like that. Just like that, it does it for you. By the way, why do I feel like... Okay, yeah, I felt like it didn't launch very far the first time. But that was really funny. Okay. Oh! Oh, I must have killed something. Hello, sea hounds. Remember, everybody, one hit and done. Especially when you're fighting more than one. If there's one left, go ahead for the two hits to finish them off. But yeah, those guys, they're not cool. They're not cool. We literally just had a guide on them not too long ago if you want to learn more. But yeah, this is it, everybody. This is how you actually mine coral quite, come on, quite efficiently. But here's the thing. While this is obviously great for coral, which we use for a lot of things, anti-venom actually making limestone, refining it, of course, there's another side of coral reefs that people might not actually know about. And that's that you can hammer them once they got nothing on them. You can just go ahead and hammer the bare coral reef for these things called coral larvae, which are going to help actually replant coral reefs where you want them. We've done that in the past. We might do it this time. Who knows? Depends on how this uh, base turns out. But you also get full limestone this way. And that's going to be very, very helpful. Know what else we need, everybody? Sand. And to make it interesting, oh, that's actually really rare to get anything other than sand from these things. But to make it interesting, I'm digging up the sand nearby some dangerous mobs. Oh my gosh, game. What are you doing? I was literally going to go on this whole spiel about how digging up sand, you know, jokingly is easy. But you got to be careful because you can dig up some bad things sometimes, like even snakes. And then some of the loot. But the chances are abysmally small. But of course, the luck of this playthrough is shining through once again. And our first step to an aquatic base, a sea lab, folks. Beautiful. What's a sea lab? Well, it's an alchemy engine on the water. Second step to an aquatic base, make sure I can actually build things needed for an aquatic base using things that are on the islands because apparently I was running low on everything. <laughs> I had no resources for any, really, I had no resources for anything else that I wanted to do. I need coconuts, I need grass, I need twigs, I need it all, folks, because last week I was just sailing from thing to thing, getting lucky, not even playing the game. Today, I gotta play the game. Well, also got hit by my first coconut, so yeah, remember how I said the luck was... <sighs> remember how I said the luck was gonna be leaving our side, everybody? Yes. Yes, I believe it's starting. And you know what? I'm kind of happy about it. You know, there's also something really funny about getting hit in the head with a coconut while you're... <sighs> while you're wearing a full side crown. Hello, friends. Hello. So say hello to Palm Tree Guardians, everybody, in case you've never bloody seen them before. Um, they're interesting. They're... Did I miss? No, I didn't miss. You're just not catching on fire for some reason. You're also not fighting. That was really weird. Why are you not catching on fire? There we go. Okay. Here's how you deal with Palm Tree Guardians. You get a couple of them just like that, and then you fight the other big lad. And you might be thinking, holy moly, that's a huge dude with not a lot... <sighs> Their kiting pattern is also extremely annoying, as you can see. Oh my bloody gosh, everybody. Okay. But this is how you deal with Palm Tree Guardians, and uh, they just dance forever. They literally just stand next to each other, and they just cannot get themselves out whatsoever. It's called dancing. It's a strategy for sure. You will lose all your loot, but they usually spawn in, uh, in pairs and in threes. So if you just get rid of two of them, fight one, you know what? It's still a good idea. Step three on the quest to aquaticness, be sure to hammer the debris that you spawn next to in Shipwrecked as you get yourself a free boat repair kit. Beautiful. Step four, bamboo, everybody. And just to make it fast, I'm just going to be digging it up. Not sure if I'm going to be making my own bamboo farms or not, but again, just for the sake of speed, I'm just going to do this instead of hacking and slashing. And the previous two steps are going hand in hand with this one, because we also got some troll netting to do. After I'm done with all this nonsense, gotta make sure that we do some exploring to find some tar pits and some bioluminescence, all that jazz. And, uh, well, trawl net's gonna be very helpful there. 
Because for one thing, we can't get no tar without a tar extractor. So all those coconuts I was also getting, the bamboo and the limestone. Boom. Beautiful. Now we just got to find a tar slick. Uh, and then unfortunately, after all that, yeah, that needs tar. Everything else needs tar. Everything else needs things on the water. So yeah, I've got some exploring to do. Nope, I don't want those co Do those coconuts just... Those coconuts just, like, disappeared behind the limestone. Did you see that? All right. But, yeah, I need to get myself out there on the water. So let's make some trawl nets, and let's get out on there. Oh, but this is actually a really good find, because you know what else we need? Silk. And why is that? Fish farms, everybody. Some of the greatest inventions ever. And <laughs> don't starve. Also, I can't say I've ever seen this many of these right next to each other. Is this a set piece that I am unaware of? Why are there so many right next to each other? I don't know, but they're gonna die. Ugh, every time I think I got the hunger thing under control, guess what bloody happens? Ooh, a super spyglass? I didn't even know that was freaking possible from one of these things. Okay, um, sure. <laughs> I'll take a super spy glass, because that might make my life a heck of a lot easier right now. If you don't know what a super spy glass is, everybody, it's a spy glass, but superfied by the Eye of the Tiger Shark, which is a boss in Shipwreck, in case this is your first time ever seeing or hearing of any of this. Wow. Okay. It's really good. It's really good. But don't use it on land, and don't use it at night. You gotta use it on a boat, and of course, during the day to get it the furthest it can view. Take, for example, this direction, everybody. Direction I haven't gone in yet. Boom, bada, bang, just like that. That's the edge of the world. Now I know that that is the edge of the world. That might actually be incredibly useful. Because as we know, the volcano likes to be in the corners of the map, right? So if I do a bit of sailing this way, let's say, and then I just go ahead and peer this way, boom, gives me a wide view there. Hmm, ooh. I will check out that though. Brief cases on the water, everybody, can be really, really good. Ooh, row. Speaking of fish farms, very important for them. And bloody heck, the game must know what I'm doing because it's given me every. Oh my gosh, another one? No, 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 that's mine. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. It's given me all the bloody row in the world right now. They just keep. They just keep coming. Oh my gosh, this playthrough is not stopping, everybody. This playthrough is not stopping. The problem is, I'm not sure I'm going to have fish farms up to even use any of this row. But come on, briefcase. You guys can be really good sometimes, and you're not good that time. <laughs> Usually the ones that are better are the ones that are not in graveyards, actually. Just the ones found on the deep water. But speaking of, I still gotta find some tar. If I find some tar, man, we can actually get a good old base set up pretty quickly before the end of the day. Yeah, I would actually appreciate to do that. Well, that was somewhat of a waste, everybody. Wow. Okay, started over here, went down all the way to the edge, found that was the corner, came all the way here, this is another corner, I went to do this, and I found bloody nothing. <laughs> okay. All right, yeah, looks like I gotta do this the hard way then. Oh, spoke too soon, everybody. Found one beautiful. Problem is... Man, is it far away from everything I've been- Piss off, stink rays. What are you doing? I ain't got nothing beef with you. Okay, get out of here. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Problem is, it's really far away. Also, do not forget to turn them on. <laughs> I cannot tell you how many times I have done that myself, everybody. Okay, I am starving to death. Thank goodness there's an island right here. Oh, let's eat. And then let's just wait for this tar to come our way. Oh, I see the problem. I made it right by a stink ray spawning spot. <laughs> They're literally right here. They spawn right on top of it. My gosh. Oh, this is actually kind of convenient. I need some of you, don't I? Boom, 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 boom. Bioluminescence is mine. Oh, is that a Bolfin school I see? Yes, indeed. Wow, you guys spawn like on the money. <laughs> These guys usually spawn day 15 to 20. Yeah, yeah. I would say bang on the money on that one. Okay. I need to wait for that tar to do its work. Because I might have miscalculated. <laughs> it's a lot more tar that we need. I thought it was like three each. No, it's like six each. And then that's not even counting the other stuff I might make. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
We got some waiting to do. And some boat repairing too. So thankfully, on the island with an alchemy engine, there's a ton of freaking killer bees. Okay, good, 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 good. Let's just chill. Because for right now, there's really not much I want to do. Especially when we've already been recording for an hour and a half. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and make one of you, which is why I wanted to get that bioluminescence, by the way. Also, one of, hold up, what am I missing? Rope, okay. Let's get some rope. Boom, and boom. Fish farm craft, also beautiful, lovely, lovely. Is it telling me to make a top hat? Yes, it is. Do I need a top hat for? Right, I need a pirate hat. Right, what is a pirate hat, by the way? How hard is that to make? I forget, I forget. Oh, it's under nautical, actually. Uh, yeah, that's a weird thing about this. Oh, that's really easy. Okay, let's do that. You know, I think I'll actually make a bottle lantern too, because I'm not sure if I've really ever used one in any of our playthroughs, but it's essentially a lantern. <laughs> it's the lantern of Don't Starve Shipwrecked. You can carry it, you can drop it, it will still provide light, you can turn it off just like that. Uh, that was not the wisest decision, and it can be refueled. Yeah, you know what? Let's do it. And holy crap, I just bloody realized that that was the last day of mild season. Okay then, <laughs> welcome to hurricane season. All of this is about to blow away. I'm not planning for this whatsoever. Oh my gosh, everybody. Oh my gosh, and by the way, our tar extractor is all the way over there. Oh, oh, oh. But we're off to the races nonetheless, folks. With one day down, we got ourselves seven tar. Not bad. Now we just gotta wait another day, which you won't be waiting, I'll be waiting. So unless something crazy happens, I'm just gonna get this tar, I'm gonna prototype what I need to prototype, and then we're wrapping up the day. But you know what? Screw just waiting around. I wasn't gonna open these because I didn't want anything more, but we might as well just keep testing our luck, right? Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Divining rod. I don't think I'll be using the divining rod this playthrough, but a gear and a blue gem. Sure. I'll take it. Oh, but here comes the strong winds, everybody. Hurricane season and lots of rain upon us. What's next, though? Okay, then. Booty bag. Not bad. Bucket of poop. Sure, why not? All right, don't think I need the red gem. The booty bag's okay, but, you know, I need a lot of space right now. If I didn't have uh, the piggyback, absolutely. Booty bag is a backpack, but it produces the blooms every now and then, which is actually not that bad. And the last one that we've got for the day, everybody, is smack dab in the middle of Skull Island. Now, this is pure happenstance, but usually these ones are the obsidian coconut ones. Yup. Okay. <laughs> yup, yup, yup. It's actually not pure happenstance. Because, believe it or not, everybody, when you generate a shipwrecked world, there is only a certain amount of messages in a bottle that generate with it, and each and every one of them has a predestined spot to make sure where their X marks the spot, uh, X marks the sport, X marks the spot is. If you never knew that, yep, that's entirely how it works. It's actually kind of neat. It makes sure that you can't bloody cheat in X marks the spots. Oh, here comes the rain, though. Okay, so I'm on my way back to the tar extractor, which should pretty much be done. They're usually daily. Uh, they usually go through all their fuel within a day, a little bit longer than that. So that should be ready to roll very, very soon. Okay, this is somewhat unfortunate timing because, yeah, the one thing about a sea base is that I'm not going to have any protection against the insane amount of rain that's going to be coming our way. If you're playing normally, you have this awesome, awesome structure called the Palm Leaf Hut, which is beautiful. But yeah, on the water, kind of screwed. Also, why did I even bring half of this stuff with me? <laughs> I don't even know, but I got my tar, everybody. I could have gotten more. It had some more fuel, but I only need 12. 12 to get started. 12 to make what I want to make, everybody. I think that's good. So let's just finish this episode, which is probably going to be called Sea Base Prep 101. Oh, son of a gun. I just thought of something else, everybody. That's going to require more tar, I'm pretty sure. Don't the sea chests also require tar? I don't think I can see them from in here, can I? Yes, I can. Never mind. Right. Okay. When we get back home, <laughs> you're going to notice that the strong winds are going to be blowing everything everywhere. So I was just about to go say, hey, that's okay. I'm just going to make a ton of sea chests and then I'm going to transfer everything. 
Yeah, not going to be able to do that. Oh, but I'll take one of these on the way home. Sure. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. <gasps> okay, screw you. <laughs> screw you, game. Oh my gosh, everybody. Okay, now that's an end to the freaking video. Oh, and yes, welcome to freaking hurricane season. Lightning everywhere. Oh, I was trying to hack these so I can eat, but then lightning struck, and now I'm going to absolutely destroy everything. Okay, yeah, yeah, welcome to the Don't Starve as well. <laughs> welcome to the Don't Starve, where things just hit the fan immediately. But first things first, the sea yard, everybody. Beautiful, beautiful. Now I don't really need to rely on what's my dudes anymore, uh, boat repair kits. But secondly, the buoyant chiminea, which, by the way, does not require a prototype. A lot of the things that you can build on the water don't, which is actually really, really nice. So, okay, we got this. We got ourselves, of course, a sea yard. We got ourselves some buoys. We're, of course, making our way towards some fish farms. In fact, I already uh, pre-made one. Correct, correct. Okay, okay. Next comes the chests. Right. But, folks, I think that will do it for now. We are ready to build a base. Now we need to find where we're actually building it. But, okay, we did some good map in the day. We know that's the edge. We know that's a corner. We know that's a corner. I mean, the volcano could still be snuck in somewhere. I don't know. I don't know. I still actually don't know where we are basing. But, as I said, we're ready to bloody do so. Beautiful. Tar is ours. Hurricane season is here. The hail is here. Oh, before we go, actually, let's go ahead and do some of this. Pick up four of these. Come on over here and refine some ice. Beautiful. Now we can make an ice uh, machine very soon. Holy moly, that went shooting off into the distance. Okay. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, just wow. It continues. Up and down, fluctuating luck. This, uh, this part, of course, but the playthrough is still consistently very lucky. So we'll see what happens next week. Bye-bye.